The 10 News Weather Authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. The tropics are incredibly active right now. We have Fiona, we have Gaston, we have now newly formed Hermine. We've got another tropical wave in the middle of the Atlantic, and we also, of course, have tropical depression number nine. Let's first talk about Fiona. Fiona, still a major hurricane. It's going to impact the maritime provinces of Canada, first impacting likely Nova Scotia here as we head into the weekend. And as it moves into the uh, <laughs> Arctic Ocean, basically, it will eventually fall apart, but it's going to bring a whole lot of rain and wind into Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland, and also New Brunswick. We also have Tropical Depression 9. This will likely become Ian here over the course of the next maybe day or two. It's going to go just to the west of Jamaica, perhaps impact the western tip of Cuba, and from there, it could impact the Gulf Coast of Florida. So we've got uh, several systems we're keeping a very close eye on here at your local weather authority, but the one that is catching our eye the most is no doubt Tropical Depression number 9. We're going to be talking about that storm for the better part of the next week or so. So where does TD9 go? Well, right now it is expected, according to the path from the National Hurricane Center, to make landfall near Tampa as a Category 3 hurricane Wednesday afternoon. But notice there's a very large cone of uncertainty extending anywhere from Miami all the way towards Destin in Florida. So right now the National Hurricane Center is somewhat somewhat confident that it's going to impact somewhere along the Gulf Coast of Florida. The qu big question is where and then where does it go from there? Well, we need to figure that out because if it takes more of a westerly path or this yellow line right there, then it could certainly bring us a whole lot of rain and wind from next Friday night all the way through Sunday. However, if it takes this easterly path, it would leave us for the most part dry and allow us to remain on the cool side. Whole lot to study here over the course of the next week or so. Locally, not much happening. Not much going to happen tomorrow as well. A couple of clouds here or there, but we are anticipating clouds building here later tonight, and tomorrow's not going to see as much sunshine as what we saw today. Tomorrow, a stray shower cannot be ruled out towards the Mountain Empire. Outside of that, we think we're going to have a better chance for a little bit of rain as we head into Sunday. Could have a stray shower or two as soon as Sunday morning. Otherwise, I think there's a better chance for some scattered showers, maybe even a stray storm later Sunday afternoon into Sunday evening. I do think we're partly to mostly cloudy on Sunday, so Sunday's probably going to have a little more cloud cover than what we see on Saturday. Look at this hourly muggy meter. Dew points stay on the low side for us here as we head into the day tomorrow. However, the muggies will increase briefly on Sunday. Once we have that cold front pushing through here Sunday night, a return to fall like air comes into play as we head into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week so the dew points start to go back down again 73 right now Lynchburg 71 Roanoke 64 Withville Hillsville and Galax and as we go zone by zone high temperatures for tomorrow 72 in the NRV 74 Highlands 75 in Roanoke middle 70s and Lynchburg and south side as well calm and crisp tonight overnight lows between about 43 and 51 for the day tomorrow mix of sun and clouds overall a pretty nice day talked about those highs mainly in the 70s and in your extended forecast you'll notice temperatures starting with a seven for the next five days may fall into the upper 60s Thursday and Friday. Once we get rid of those rain chances Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, Monday through Thursday, we are indeed dry.